A cordial greeting. Today is Saturday, June 29, 2024. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia. As I record this video, it is 8.30 p.m. local time in the Lesser Antilles, where the Southern Islands are preparing for the impact of what could potentially be a major hurricane passing through the region next Monday. Specifically, we are talking about Hurricane Barrel, which has rapidly intensified over the past 24 hours and currently has maximum sustained winds of 80 miles per hour or 130 kilometers per hour. It is projected that conditions will allow for rapid strengthening as it moves west or west-northwest. In fact, it is forecasted to become a Category 3 hurricane with maximum sustained winds of 120 miles per hour or 190 kilometers per hour and will directly affect parts of Barbados, St. Lucia, St. Vincent, and the Grenadines, and Grenada. It is important that residents and visitors in this area prepare for a significant event with torrential rains, extreme wind gusts, and storm surges that could pose a high risk to life and property. Hurricane Barrel has already set some records. For instance, it is the farthest east-forming hurricane in June. Additionally, if it becomes a major hurricane, it will be only the third hurricane to form so early in the hurricane season. As we have discussed over the past months, this is the beginning of a very war dangerous and active period in the Atlantic Basin due to the extremely warm temperatures in the tropical Atlantic and the absence of the El Nino phenomenon in the Pacific. In this video, I will talk about the direct effects expected across the Lesser Antilles. We will also discuss the indirect effects on the northern Lesser Antilles Islands, Puerto Rico, and the Dominican Republic. And then we will talk about the threat this cyclone also poses to parts of Jamaica, Belize, the Yucatan Peninsula, Cuba, and eventually sectors of the Gulf of Mexico. At the end of the video, we'll talk a bit about the next tropical wave that has a high probability of becoming a tropical depression, as it follows a very similar path to Hurricane Barrel. In fact, it is important to mention that residents of the Lesser Antilles should prepare not only for the impact of a hurricane, but also for another potential cyclone by the end of next week. So please prepare for a challenging week. What we are currently seeing with Hurricane Barrel is extremely impressive. We have a hurricane that is rapidly strengthening in the tropical Atlantic, which is unusual for June. Looking at the infrared satellite image from the past few hours, we have seen it develop strong bands around the circulation center, indicating continued rapid strengthening. It is likely that we will see the development of an eye tonight. Additionally, it is important to note that this cyclone has a very compact circulation, which should help it continue to strengthen quickly. However, this is also important because the effects expected on the Lesser Antilles will largely depend on the exact path of the circulation center. Let's look at the latest forecast from the National Hurricane Center. First, as you can see, a hurricane warning has been issued for Martinique, St. Lucia, Barbados, St. Vincent, and the Grenadines, and Grenada. Dominica is under a tropical storm watch. The forecast path has not changed much today. It continues to project that hurricane. Barrow will pass over the Lesser Antilles on Monday morning as a Category 3 hurricane and will then continue its path passing well south of Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic. For now, the Dominican Republic is outside the cone of uncertainty, which is good news for both Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic. However, the trajectory suggests it will pass near or over Jamaica on Wednesday afternoon and eventually reach the Western Caribbean Sea, where it could threaten western Cuba, Belize, or the Yucatan Peninsula. For now, it is projected to be a Category 1 hurricane when it reaches the Western Caribbean Sea, due to expected wind shear affecting the cyclone from Tuesday onward, leading to weakening as it moves through this region. Therefore, the worst impacts seem to be expected for the Lesser Antilles, but we anticipate weakening, which is definitely good news for sectors located further west. Nevertheless, it is important to stay alert to any changes in these forecasts, especially beyond five days, where uncertainty is very high. The trajectory forecast is highly reliable due to the model's strong consensus in maintaining this west or west-northwest trajectory over the next five days. Therefore, few changes are expected in this trajectory forecast. Long term, it could reach the Yucatan Peninsula and eventually Gulf of Mexico waters. Additionally, there is strong consensus in the intensity projections, with rapid strengthening expected over the next 36 hours, reaching Category 3 status between Sunday night and Monday morning as it passes over the Lesser Antilles. By Tuesday, weakening is expected due to wind shear. Let's look at some global model projections. The American model shows a Category 2 or Category 3 hurricane passing just south of Barbados on Monday morning, then moving over parts of St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines around noon and subsequently maintaining a west-northwest trajectory, much like the National Hurricane Center's forecast. By Wednesday afternoon, it is expected to reach Jamaica as a Category 1 hurricane. Additionally, the next tropical wave is projected to approach the Lesser Antilles by Wednesday evening or Thursday morning, potentially as a tropical storm or Category 1 hurricane. 
By Friday and Saturday, Hurricane Barrel approaches the Yucatan Peninsula, and the next tropical storm approaches the northern Lesser Antilles and Puerto Rico. There is still uncertainty with this second system, which we will be evaluating in the coming days. Six and seven days out, the hurricane moves over Gulf of Mexico waters, and we will be observing whether it heads towards the U.S. states or west towards northern Mexico. The European model shows Hurricane Barrel passing just south of Barbados early Monday morning, over St. Lucia, St. Vincent, and the Grenadines, following a similar trajectory to the GFS model, and moving near or over Jamaica on Wednesday afternoon, eventually moving over the Yucatan Peninsula between Friday night and early Saturday morning, and then over the Gulf of Mexico, eventually moving over Tamaulipas on Sunday July 7 or Monday July 8. Both models have a nearly identical forecast, increasing confidence in the National Hurricane Center's official forecast. Therefore, few changes are expected in the forecast for Hurricane Barrel. The GFS ensemble members also project a similar trajectory putting Jamaica, Belize, and the Yucatan Peninsula at risk. The next cyclone is also expected to move at a low latitude, so we will continue monitoring the Eastern Caribbean. The European ensemble members are quite aggressive in projecting a powerful hurricane passing south of Puerto Rico. The official forecast indicates it will be a Category 3 hurricane when it moves through this region, but is expected to weaken as it approaches Jamaica and eventually Belize or the Yucatan Peninsula. The forecast is quite clear. First, People in the southern Lesser Antilles Islands should be preparing immediately, with about 24 to 36 hours to complete preparations. Residents of Jamaica, the Yucatan Peninsula, and Belize should continue monitoring Hurricane Barrel's development. Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic are currently out of danger, although they will experience some indirect effects that we will discuss in the next few minutes. Looking at wind gust projections from the GFS model, some gusts of up to 190 km per hour are expected to affect St. Lucia, Barbados, St. Vincent, the Grenadines, and Granada next Monday. Tropical storm force winds between 60 and 40 km per hour could affect Guadeloupe, Dominica, and Martinique. As I mentioned this morning, tropical storm force winds are expected to remain south of Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic, and the Virgin Islands. In addition to the wind, torrential rains are expected to affect the Lesser Antilles. The GFS model projects rainfall accumulations of 180 to 200 mm over a 24-hour period causing flooding in this region. Since it's a small circulation, it is crucial to know where the center will pass, and we still do not know exactly where the maximum rainfall accumulations will fall. This is expected between Martinique, St. Lucia, St. Vincent, the Grenadines, Barbados, and Grenada. All these islands should prepare for a rain and flood event. For some islands north of the Lesser Antilles, 40 to 50 millimeters of accumulated rainfall is expected. Puerto Rico is expected to receive 3 to 4 inches of rain from the outer bands, especially in the eastern half of the island, and the eastern Dominican Republic between 40 to 75 millimeters of accumulated rain. Before I go, I wanted to briefly talk about the next disturbance we are monitoring. It has a 70% chance of development as it maintains a west-northwest trajectory, similar to Hurricane Barrel's path. It is projected to reach the central or southern Lesser Antilles by the end of next week. There is still uncertainty about whether it will pass near Puerto Rico or the Dominican Republic. We will have several days to monitor this disturbance's evolution. Everyone in the Caribbean should remain alert, not only to Hurricane Barrel but also to this next disturbance. In fact, looking at the infrared satellite animation, we can see the rotation associated with this disturbance, which should soon be designated as Invest 96, allowing us to see some specialized trajectory and intensity projections. That's all for this video. We will continue special coverage related to Hurricane Barrel, so don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Go to the bottom of the video, click the red subscribe button, and then click the bell so you get notifications when I post new videos. I'll be back with a new video tomorrow morning to update the forecast for Hurricane Barrel. Goodbye for now.